Hello friends, myself Satish Shankar Ravanite. I am going to deliver software testing and quality assurance. Department of Computer Engineering, KKWIAR Nashik. The main topics to be covered in this session. First one is introduction. Some examples from past. Why do we even need software testing? Basics of software testing, testing principles, goals, testing life cycle, and summary. Now, introduction part first one is what is software testing? Software testing is most important phase in SDLC, that means software development life cycle. Software testing is the process of exercising or evaluating a system or system component by manually or automated means to verify that it satisfy the specified requirements. Now, again the question arises here that what exactly does a software test do? The th basic three points are very important for software tester. The main goal of software tester is to find bugs. Second, the goal of software tester is to find bugs and find them as early as possible. And third one is, the goal of software tester is to find bugs, find them early as possible and make sure that they get fixed. Now what is the basic qualities of software tester? Suppose if you want to make career as a software tester in software company like CMM4 or CMM5 level companies, the basic qualities of software tester, we can say that first they are explorer. Software, that means software tester are not afraid to venture into unknown situations. They love to get a new piece of software, install it on their PC and see what happens. Second quality, that is they are troubleshooters. Software testers are good at figuring out why something doesn't work and the main thing they love puzzles. Third, they are relentless. Software testers keep trying, they may see a, a bug that quickly vanishes or it is difficult to recreate. Then rather than dismiss it as a fluke. Fourth quality, they are creative. That means testing the obvious is not sufficient for software testers. Their job is to think up creative and even of the wall approaches to find the bugs. Next quality, they are perfectionist. They strive the perfection, but they know when it becomes unattainable and they are okay with getting as close as they can. They are persuasive. Bugs that testers find won't always be viewed as severe enough to be fixed. Now here, two things are important in testing, that is severity and priority. Severity indicates that how bad the bug is reflects and its impact to the product or to the end user. And priority is how important it is to fix the bug and when it should be fixed. Now, second, that what is quality assurance? Quality means what? Quality is reasonably bug free, delivered on time, within budget, and meets all the requirements and specification. Now, most of time, the question arises here that what is the main role of SQA, that means Software Quality Assurance. 
so we can say that software QA involves the entire software development process monitoring and improving the process and making sure that agreed upon any standard procedures are followed or not in the context of software engineering software quality measures how well software is designed and how well the software conforms to the design although there are several different definition but it is often described as the fitness for purpose of a piece of software software quality may be defined as conformance to explicitly state functional and performance requirements explicit document development standards and implicit characteristics that are expected of all professionally developed software the key points of software uh, quality assurance software requirements are the foundations from which quality is measured second lack of conformance to requirement is lack of quality third specified standards define a set of development criteria that guide the manager is software engineer and another important fourth point if criteria are not followed lack of quality will usually result a set of implicit requirements often goes unmentioned and if software conforms its explicit requirement but falls to meet implicit requirements now what is bug a software bug is the common term used to describe an error from mistake failure or fault in a computer program or system that produces an incorrect or unexpected result or causes it to behave in unintended ways different terms are being used defect issues anomaly problem fault and failure bugs are caused by numerous reason but in the sample project analysis the main cause can be traced to the specification and most important thing at the time of interview also the question arise here that when will be bug occur so most of times we can say that when will be the coding is generated testing will be start but this is not the right answer the testing will be start from the requirement phase because 59% of errors comes from the requirement phase so some examples from past famous software bugs petrite missile defense system so the main cause was to save computer storage space legacy software often stored the year for dates as two digit number such as 99 for 1999 the software also interpreted 00 to mean 1900 rather than 2000 so when the year 2000 came along bugs would result cost of bugs increase with more with time down the software life cycle as an example of how this works consider the disney lion king case discussed earlier the root cause of the problem was that the software wouldn't work on a very popular pc platform if in the early specification stage someone had researched what pcs were popular and specified that the software needed to be designed and tested to work on those configurations the cost of that effort would have been minimal if that didn't occur a backup would have been for the software testers to collect samples of popular pcs and verify the software on them when do we even need software testing 
software testing is needed to verify and validate the software that has been built to meet the user's specification. That means if the specification is not clear, then definitely the bugs will occur. Testing ensures that what you get in the end is what you wanted to build. Testing enhances the integrity of a system by detecting deviations in design and errors in the system. Testing aims at detecting error-prone areas. This helps in the prevention of errors in a system. Testing also adds value to the product by conforming to the user requirement. The cost of bugs and defect. This is also very important. The cost are, costs are logarithmic, that is, they increase tenfold as time increase. That means if you will find the bug in the early stage, that is very important for any software company. A bug found and fixed during the early stages when the specification is being written might cost next to nothing. Or, dollar were in our example, the same bug, if not found until the software is coded and tested, might cost dollar $10 or $100. If a customer finds it, the cost could easily be thousands or even millions of dollars. The basics of software testing. The definition of testing according to IEEE 2059 standards. The testing is the process of analyzing a software item to detect the difference between existing and required condition and to evaluate the features of the software item. Most of time at the time of interview, the interviewer will ask the question why you want to make career in software testing. Then your answer should be very diplomatic. Because this is tester responsibility to release that software as a bug free and behave as per the user's requirement. If you are thinking that software lifecycle, Big Bang, Code and Fix, Waterfall, Spiral, and Agile. Requirements. As we know, requirement phase is very important because in requirement most of the things are covered what are the testing strategy what are the different testing tools you are going to use how much experienced staff members are there there are so many things are covered then design design phase is also very important then build After that, implementation, then verification, and then support. Verification, we can say there are two things, verification and validation. There are two complicated lines are there. Am I built product right? That means verification. Am I built right product? That is validation. Basics of software testing. First, user requirement, specification, analysis, HLD, that means high level design, LLD, low level design, coding, build, unit testing, integration testing, functional testing, system testing, and user acceptance testing. Unit testing can be a page, menu, or module, or it is the very smallest testable part of an, any application. Integration testing, a group of modules are tested together, then we can say it's an integration testing. And the main objective of integration testing to test the interfaces within modules. Functional testing, simply that what are 
mentioned in the specification as far as that means software requirement specification we are going to work according to that system testing when the entire product or project tested at once then we get a system testing and user acceptance testing that means uat this is the last level of testing at the end user basics of software testing terminologies we should be aware of verification and validation verification and validation are often used interchangeably but have different definition and these differences are important to software testing verification is the process confirming that something software meets its specification and in case of validation the process confirming that it meets the user's requirement this may sound very similar or in other words we can say QA that means quality assurance means verification and quality control means validation plus actual testing second terminologies quality and reliability software tester often fall into the trap of believing that quality and reliability are the same thing they feel that if they can test a program until it's stable dependable and reliable they are assuring a high quality product unfortunately that isn't necessary to a software user's idea of quality may include the breadth of features the ability of the product to run on his old pc then testing and quality assurance The last pair of definition is testing and quality assurance sometimes shortened to QA. These two terms are the ones most often used to describe either in the group or the process. The goal of software tester is to find bugs, find them as early as possible and make sure they get fixed. A software quality assurance person main responsibility is to create and enforce standards. Due to immense competition, manufacturers must focus on keeping good identity of a product. And quality of product depends on few characteristics like satisfying customers need, cost, features, functionalities and we can say that the delivery schedule. Whereas quality of conformance is concerned with implementation and quality of design measure how valid the design and requirements are in creating a worthwhile product. A quality product must conform to specification which ultimately satisfies the customer's needs it must be built as per design stated now testing principles a number of testing principle have been suggested over the years first presence of defects testing can show the defects are present but cannot prove that there are no defects testing reduces the number of probability of undiscovered defects remaining in the software but even if no defects are found it is not a proof of correctness because release at the time of release may be is it possible because tester is also a human being and due to some problem maybe some defect should be there so in my opinion in this world not a single software we can say it's a completely or totally bug free definitely some defect should be there second principle exhaustive input testing to be sure of finding all defects one has to test using not only all valid inputs but all possible inputs so infinite numbers of test cases may have to be produced 
so testing everything is not feasible except for travel cases instead of exhaustive testing risk analysis and priority should be used focus testing efforts third basic principle of testing is creative and difficult testing is not simple because extensive domain knowledge is required Large software system are also very complex in nature. Testing requires insight and knowledge, creativity and experience required for effective testing. If anyone asking to me, in my case, which one will be the difficult task, coding or testing? So my answer should be definitely testing is the difficult task. Fourth principle: early testing. Testing activities should start as early as possible. In the software or system uh, development life cycle, should be focused on defined objectives. Testing early will reduce the error, which will prevent the defects at later stage. Cost of fixing the errors at a later stage is higher than fixing it at an early stage. Fifth principle: defect clustering. Study suggests the problems in an item of software team to customer around a limited set of modules or areas. Once these areas have been identified, efficient test managers are able to focus testing on the sensitive areas while still searching for errors in the remaining software modules. Sixth principle that pesticide paradox: if the same tests are repeated over and over again eventually the sum set of test cases will no longer find new defects to overcome this basic side paradox the test cases need to be regularly reviewed and revised and new different test cases need to be written now question here is here that what is test cases some input condition prerequisite expected result actual result can be written in the document form so that is test cases seventh principle that testing must be planned ad hoc testing does not give confidence on software quality document the test objectives approach and the resources in a test plan document context dependent Testing is done differently in different contexts. For example, safety critical software is tested differently from an e-commerce application. The ninth and last principle that absence of errors fallacy. Declaring that a test has unerred no errors is not the same as declaring the software error free. In order to ensure that adequate software testing procedures are carried out in every situation tester should assume that all software contain some faults the main goal of testing the testing can mean many different things depending on how who is doing it and where in a process is being performed the programmers administrators users and consultants all have something different in mind when they are testing because quality planning includes planning for the process used to build and test software to create a right product and performing quality operations such as verification and validation as per process definition at different phases of sdlc that's why verification is a discipline approach to evaluate whether a software product fulfills the requirements or condition imposed on them by the standard or processes it is done to ensure that the processes and procedures defined by the customers and an organization for development and testing are followed correctly if you are talking about advantages of verification 
verification can confirm that the work product has followed the process correctly as defined by the organization it can reduce the cost of finding and fixing defects as each work product is reviewed and corrected faster sometimes defects are fixed as when they are found it can be used effectively for training people about processes and standards typically peer review superior reviews and walk throughs can be excellent tools for training as earlier i always explained that priority coverage the next goal is unbiased test must balance the written requirements real world technical limitation and user expectation the end user's view point is obviously vital to the success of the software but it isn't all that the needs of the support team are not met earlier in last slide we are talking about walk through the walk through is more formal than peer review but less formal than inspection it is termed semi formal review as only related people are involved in walk through the main advantages of walk through we can say that walk through is an excellent tool for collaboration where joint decisions can be made by the team each and every member present must be involved in making decisions walk through is also useful for training the entire team at one time and test scenario and designs are generally subjected to walk through the main disadvantage of walk through team members may not be experts in giving comments and may need some training and basic knowledge about the project artifact under walk through and so on and time can be constrained when schedules are very tight next goal is traceable exactly what was tested and how it was tested are needed as a part of an ongoing development process in many environments such proof of activities are required as part of a certification effort or simply as a means to eliminate duplicate testing effort they shouldn't mean that extra documentation it simply means keeping your test plan clear enough to be uh, reread and understood the main roles and responsibility of kinsen day that typical inspection may include the following role that manager manager is the person responsible for getting the work product inspected for a project there may be project manager a manager decides on the execution of inspection define the schedules allocates time define the objectives to be met and determines if the inspection objectives have been met or not other roles a responsibility that's author author is the writer or person with chief responsibility of the artifact to be inspected he is the person who has created the artifact and will be taking action based on the outcome of the inspection already i have discussed that what is the goal of software tester in short here is a list of that that most software tester should have they are explorer they are troubleshooter they are relentless they are creative they are perfectionist they exercise good judgment they are tactful and diplomatic and they are persuasive that means bugs that tested find won't always be viewed as a severe enough to be fixed on oh, testing life cycle the planning of test there are the main plan of the main concept of planning that means first when will be what is the exit criteria uh, entry criteria that means when will be testing start what is the exit criteria when will be testing stop what to test what to not to test 
and different resources number of testing license software testing tools experience testers their qualities training requirement all that things comes in the planning then after that you had to analysis the test then creation and verification of test execution of testing cycle that means after write down the test cases in early stage we can say if you are freshers and if you you will get the chance to work in a software company earlier what happened that you your main role is just execution that means the addition of two number that is 2 plus 2 is equal to 4 already you will get automatic written test cases but now the scenario is totally changed because most of the companies are now believing in automation testing even though 79% companies are believe in manual testing then performance testing documentation then at last action after the implementation planning of test in this phase the senior person like the project manager plans and identifies all the areas where testing efforts is to be applied while operating within the boundaries of constraints like resources and budget unless judicious planning is done in the beginning during the planning stage the team of senior level person comes out with the outline of testing plan at high level the high level test plan comprehensively describe the following the scope of testing that means defining the areas to be tested identification of features to be covered identification of approach for testing that means identification of approaches including types of testing which types of testing are going to use black box testing white box testing whatever then defining risk identification of different types of risk involved because there are positive risk as well as negative risk are there then identification of resources identification of resources like man materials machines which need to be developed during testing phase then time schedule and this is very important for performing the desired testing is aimed to deliver the end product as per the commitment made to the customer then analysis of test based upon the high level test plan document for the nitty gritty covering the following are work out identification of type identification identification of types of testing to be performed during various stages of software development cycle the main three constraints like identification of extent to which automation needs to be done identification of time at which automation is to be carried out and identification of documentation required for automated testing third designing of test this phase involves the following first for the polishing of various test cases and test plans revision and finalization of matrix for functional validation finalization of risk assessment assessment methodologies in case line of automation is to be adopted identification of case test cases suitable for automation preparation of test data that means you have to play with live data establishing unit testing standards including defined acceptance criteria revision and finalizing the testing environment and fourth one construction and verification this phase involves the following finalization of test plan and test cases completion of script creation for test cases decided for automation completion of test run for performance testing and stress testing performance testing and stress testing we are going to cover in next lecture providing technical support to code developers in the efforts directed towards unit testing bug logging in bug repository and preparation of detailed bug report and performing integration testing following by reporting of defects detected if any then execution of testing cycle that means completion of test cycle be executed all the test cases till a predefined stage which is or a stage of no detection of any more errors 
most time the question arises here that what is the basic difference between bug error and defect this points also we are going to cover in next lecture then performance testing documentation and action software implementation the execution of test cases pertaining to performance testing and stress testing revision and finalization of test documentation verification of the software application by simulating condition of actual uses seventh one is action software implementation this phase involves the following evolution of the entire process of testing then documentation of tgr that means things gone right and tgw that means things gone wrong identification of approaches to be followed in the event of occurrence of similar defects and problems in the future and identification of fixing of newly cropped up errors on continuous basis thank you friends myself satish shankar rao banait i am going to deliver a session in software testing and quality assurance unit 2 the main topics to be covered in this session introduction need of black box testing black box testing concept requirement analysis and summary let's introduce what is black box testing black box testing is an a testing methodology where product is tested as per software specification or requirement statement defined by business analyst black box testing mainly talks about the requirement specification given by customer or intended requirements as perceived by tester it deals with testing of an executable and is independent of platform database etc and this testing is with the views as if a user is testing the system if you are talking about white box testing white box testing is a testing methodology where software is tested for this structure and white box testing covers verification of work product as per structure architecture coding standards and guidelines of software it mainly deals with the structure and design of the software product white box testing requires that tester must have knowledge about development processes and artifacts including various platform database etc and there is one more methodology covering both testing methodology at the same time the third type of testing method we can say it's a gray box testing gray box testing talks about a combination of both approaches black box testing and white box testing at the same time and there may be various shades of black box testing as well as white box testing in these types of testing depending upon the requirements of product no not a rule gray box testing mainly concentrates on integrated testing parts along with unit testing black box test design treats the system as black box so it doesn't explicit use knowledge the internal structure black box test design is usually described as focusing on testing functional requirements and white box test design allows one to peek inside the box and it is focuses especially on using internal knowledge of the software to guide the selection of the test data 
in simple word we say in black box testing there is no need to the knowledge of internal coding logic and design and in white box testing no requirement requires the knowledge of internal coding logic and design while black box and white box are terms that are still in popular use many people prefer the terms behavioral and structural behavioral test design is slightly different law from block, uh, black box test design because the use of internal knowledge is not strictly forbidden and it is important to understand that these methods are used during the test design phase and their influence is hard to see in the test once they are independent Unit testing is usually associated with structural test design, but this is no. But this is because testers usually don't have well-defined requirements at the unit level to validate. Most of time, at the time of interview, the interviewer asks the question that unit testing is the part of developer or tester. Then don't be confused. Unit testing is the part of a developer. then black box testing involves testing system components considering inputs outputs and general functionalities as defined as requirement specification it does not consider any internal processing by the system and black box testing is independent of platform database and system to make sure that the system works as per the requirement defined as well as implied ones and actual system is simulated if it is a difficult to create a real life scenario in test laboratory the main advantages of black box testing first if you are talking about that black box testing is the only method to prove that software does what is supposed to do and it does not do something which can cause a problem to user customer second it is only method to show that software is living and really works and third that some types of testing can be done only by black box testing methodologies for example performance and security the main disadvantages of black box testing that black box testing has many disadvantages so far the software development methodology is concerned the first one that we can say that some logical errors in coding can be missed in black box testing as black box testing efforts are driven by requirements and not by the design it uses boundary value analysis equivalence partitioning and some internal structure problems can be missed and some redundant testing is possible as requirements may execute the same branch of code again and again and if an application calls common functions again and again then it will be tested to many times that it leads in redundant testing the need of block black box testing for the ease of use because tester do not have to concern themselves with the inner working of an application it is easier to create test cases by simply working through the application as would be and in user it can be performed by technical users also such as dummy users who do not have programming or testing knowledge third quicker test case development because testers only concern themselves with the gui that means graphical user interface and they do not need to spend time identifying all of the internal parts that may be involved in a specific process and they need only concern themselves with the various parts through the gui that a user may take actual user can go black box testing methods and understand understand the results 
the basic concept of black box testing that treats the system as a black box so it doesn't explicitly use knowledge of the internal structure or code or in other words the test engineer need not know the internal working of the black box or application and main focus in black box testing is in functionality of the system as a whole that means you just go through the functionality the black box testing concept that focus on an input and output of the software without regard to the internal code of the program there are so many concept of black box testing that means test to pass and test to fail there are two fundamental approaches to testing software that means test to pass and test to fail when you test to pass that means you really assure only that the software minimally works you don't push it push its applica- capabilities you don't see what you can do it break it because think about it around with a newly designed car that is designed to test the very first prototype that has just rolled off the assembly line and had never been driven testing method there are different testing methods first first of all talking about that there are various testing methods under black box testing available since it is not possible to exhaustive test a product however simple the product is as in black box testing we are testing external functionalities we will need to arrive at judicious set of test to uncover as many test as possible the various techniques in method used to generate test scenario for effective black box testing first is requirement based test second positive and negative testing third boundary value analysis fourth equivalence partitioning class fifth state based or graph based sixth one is cause effect graph based seven one is error guessing and eighth one is documentation testing and domain testing so let's see first one is is requirement based testing the requirement testing deals with the validating the requirements given in the software requirement specification of the software system already in first lecture i explained that the 59% of errors comes from the requirement phase second positive and negative testing positive testing just means in testing terms we can say that just you have to go through the srs or just you have to follow the functionalities and negative testing that means to attitude to break that software positive uh, testing tries to prove that a given application works the way it is supposed to do when a test case is verifies the requirements of the product with a set of expected output it is called a positive test case and the purpose of the positive test case is to prove that products works as per the specification and as per the expectation a product or an application giving an error when it is supposed to give an error is also part of a positive testing and positive testing can thus be said to check the product's behavior for positive and negative condition as stated in the requirements boundary value analysis bva that means boundary value analysis is the method useful for arriving at test that are effective in catching defects that happen at boundaries and bva believes and extends the concept that the density of defect is more towards the boundaries the main summary of boundary analysis is test design criteria testing methods requirement based testing positive and negative testing and boundary analysis equivalence part testing this is very important term in black box testing in this method the input domain data is divided into different equivalence data classes then why equivalence part testing is important and this method is typically used to reduce the total number of test cases very important to reduce the total number of test cases to a finite set of testable test cases still covering maximum requirement 
and equivalence class or equivalence partition partition is a set of test cases that test the same thing or reveal the same work when looking for equivalence partitions think about ways to group similar inputs similar outputs and similar operation of the software and these groups are your equivalence partitions then what is equivalence class an equivalence class represents a set of valid or invalid states for input conditions this is very important in equal class error guessing what is error guessing techniques error guessing is a black box testing technique to write test cases and comes with experience with the technology and the project and error guessing is the art of guessing where errors can be hidden and there are no specific tools and techniques for this but you can write test cases depending on the situation either when reading the function documents or when you are testing and find an error that you have not documented error guessing in error guessing testers can think of situation where software will fail for example division by zero pressing submit button on form without filling any entries entering wrong data in the fields and checking software behavior state or graph based testing this is a black box testing technique that uses objects that are model in software and the relationship among these objects understanding the dynamics on how the these objects communicate and collaborate with one another can drive test cases and where this type of testing is useful the product under test is a language processor where in the syntax of the language automatically lends itself to a state machine or a context free grammar represented by a railroad diagram and data flow modeling where the system is modeled as a set of data flow leading from one state to another documentation testing user documentation covers all the manuals user guides installation guides setup guides readme file software release notes and online help that are providing along with the software to help the end user and documentation testing should have two objectives first one to check if what is stated in the document is available in the product and second one is to check if what is there is in product is explained correctly in the document the benefits of documentation testing first less support to customer and post support uh, software delivery new programmers and testers can learn from the documentation to learn extend functionality and third one is correct and high standard documentation will result in high standards and quality of the product delivered to the customer next is domain testing this type of testing doesn't even look at the specification of a software product and this is purely based on domain knowledge and expertise in the domain of application and this type of testing requires critically understanding of day to day business activities for which software is reason it requires business business domain knowledge rather than software specification knowledge for example if you are going to withdraw the money and going to atm first that go to atm put atm card inside then enter the correct pin code then choose the option that cash withdrawal then enter amount tag the cash and exit and retrieve the card so today we have gone through following topics introduction need of black box testing black box testing concept requirement analysis and next session topics will be picked up about further details on black box testing thank you hello friends myself satish shankar rao right working as an assistant professor in department of computer engineering in kkwir nashik as the subject is software testing and quality assurance unit 3 topics to be covered in this session what is test automation 
benefits of test automation skills needed for automation what to automate and scope of automation now let's start with what is test automation software test automation makes use of specialized tools to control the execution of test and compares the actual results against the expected result test automation means developing a software to test the software is called test automation testing tools not only helps us to perform regression test but also helps us to automate data setup generation product installations gui interaction defect logging etc and automation tools are used for both functional and non functional testing an important thing is that that the test automation is used to perform complex tests that are difficult to perform in a manual way and it can be used to automate some necessary task in a repetitive way widely used automation testing tools are hpqtp that means quick test professionals uft that means uh, unified functional testing selenium load runner etc the main benefits of test automation it's an faster feedback accelerated results reduce business expenses testing efficiency improvement higher overall test coverage reusability of automated test earlier detection of defects thoroughness in testing and faster time to market and information security now again the question arises here that what to automate ways to identifying scope of testing if you are thinking that the first one is identifying the types of testing amenable to automation that means test case belonging to testing types such as stress reliability scalability and performing testing are suitable for automation the test cases are executed for longer time and in a repetition automation will save significant time and effort in the long run of regression test cases second automation areas less prone to change in this point we can say that areas where requirements are not changed are considered for automation in order to avoid rework on test cases in automated automation testing proper analysis must be done to find out the areas of changes to user interfaces and automate only those areas that will go through relatively less changes third that means automate test that pertain to standards the products are tested for compliance to standards test suits developed for standards are used for product testing and can be sold at least test tools for the market certification testing suits used for testing of software and hardware before they are released and considered for automation test 
and at last fourth point is management aspect in automation in this point we can say that automation effort should focus on those areas for which management commitment exist already another management aspect is return on investment clear estimate must be given for efforts and time needed for automation automate the critical and basic functionality of a product first and then focus on test cases with less code and the test cases which are easy to automate in less time should be considered first for automation and automation should start from high priority and then cover medium and low priority requirements here priority means how important is to fix a bug and when it should be fixed and just opposite if we are talking about severity severity indicates that how bad the bug is and reflects its impact to the product or to the end user when to automate large and critical projects that is very important second projects that require testing the same areas frequently requirements not changing frequently accessing the application for load and performance with many virtual users and stable software with respect to the manual testing and very important that you have to think about that that what is the availability of time because at the time of release time schedule is very important next how to automate automation is done by using a supportive computer language like visual basic scripting scripting and automated software application there are a lot of tools available which can be used to write auto automation scripts before mentioning the tools let's identify the process which can be used to automate the testing first is very important that identifying areas within a software for automation selection of appropriate tools for test automation for example cerulean qtp load runner wind runner etc writing test scripts is also very important then next step is development of test suit then execution of the scripts if you are very proficient in coding that means you are able to write down the scripts create result reports and then identify any potential bug or performance issue now most of the times at the at the time of interview the interview will ask the portion that what is the basic difference between so manual testing and automation testing and here that manual testing first one is time consuming and tedious since test cases are executed by human resources so it is very slow and tedious in automation testing fast automation runs test cases significantly faster than human resources manual testing is not reliable so listen carefully manual testing is not reliable since result of test execution is not accurate all the time because it's in a human being 
and automation testing perform the repetition of same operation each time it is difficult in manual testing it is difficult to catch defects after regression testing using manual testing and in case of automation testing the regression testing where the codes are changed frequently the automation testing is very much helpful in manual testing it is useful when the test case needs to run once for twice but in automation testing it is useful when say you can say that when set of test cases needs to execute frequently in manual testing it is impossible to carry out manual testing on different machine or in operating system and platform combination concurrently using different test teams such tasks can be executed but in case of automation testing it works with heterogeneous environment with different machines operating system and platform combination concurrently manual testing does not involve any programming task to retrieve hidden information but in case of automation testing tester can test from complex application using automation testing as sure as the ppt we are saying that automated tests are completely reusable but manual testing is not reusable and manual tests provide limited visibility and have to be repeated by all the stakeholders and automated tests provide global visibility in manual testing executing the build verification testing that means bvt is very unexciting and tiresome in automation testing automating the build verification is not unexciting and tiresome manual testing requires less cost than automation testing but automation testing initial cost is more than manual testing but it is always useful so here we have studied about the difference between manual testing and automation testing now here we are going to tell about you some different software testing tools following are the tools which can be used for automation testing first one is hp quick test professional second selenium now for days the companies like cmm 4 level and 5 level most of the companies are using tools like selenium third ibm rational functional test silk test test complete testing anywhere wind runner wind runner that means if you want to make career and if you want to use tools like wind runner that means you are very proficient in vb 6.0 then load runner that means you are very proficient in c sharp and at last visual studio test professional so these are the different software testing tools thank you हेलो फ्रेंड्स मैं सिर्फ सतीश शंकर राव बनाइक वर्किंग एज एन असिस्टेंट प्रोफेसर कंप्यूटर इंजीनियर डिपार्टमेंट के के डब्ल्यू आई आर नाशिक नाउ वी आर गोइंग टू कवर यूनिट फोर दैट मींस सिलेनियम टूल टॉपिक्स टू बी कवर इन दिस सेशन first introduction to selenium selenium tool suit why is selenium 
features of selenium and at last advantages and drawbacks of selenium now let's start with introduction to selenium selenium is a free automated testing framework used to validate web application across different browsers and platforms firstly in 2004 jason r huggins and team is invented testing tool for web application and named as javascript functional test selenium is a free open source web automation tools or suit which is used to perform testing on web application and important thing that selenium is not just a single tool but a suite of softwares each catering to different testing needs of an organizations and you can use multiple programming languages like java c sharp python etc to create selenium test scripts testing done using the selenium tool is usually referred to as a selenium testing and another important thing is that selenium tool is similar to q2p that means quick test professional but it only focuses on web based applications nowadays selenium is very hot so lots of demands in the market selenium has a robust set of tools which supports rapid testing of test automation for web based applications and it provides a rich set of testing function specifically geared to the needs of testing of a web applications and these operations are highly flexible allowing many options for locating ui elements um, and comparing expected test results against actual application behavior and one of the selenium's key features is the support for executing one test on multiple browser platform and it is a single tool but it is a suite of software to catering need on it industry that is very important now selenium tool suit selenium software is not just a single tool but a suite of software each piece catering to different testing needs of an organization and here is the list of some tools first one is selenium integrated development environment that means ide second rc that means selenium remote remote control third one is web driver and fourth one is selenium grid now let us discuss one by one first we are to going to see that this diagram that selenium suit would be this distinguish in four part that means selenium id selenium rc sel the web driver and selenium grid so let's start with selenium ide selenium ide is an integrated development environment for selenium test it is previously known as selenium recorder and it is implemented as a firefox and chrome extension and allows you to record edit and replay the test in firefox and chrome and it is also allows easier development of test another important thing in selenium id that allows to save test as html java ruby scripts or any other format and it also allows you 
do automatically an assertion to all the pages as well as allow you to add silences commands as and when required and can be used by developers with little to no programming experience to write simple tests quickly and gain familiarity with the silences commands and develop test can be run against other browsers using a simple simple command line interfaces that invoke the selenium rc server and most important thing that can export web driver or remote control scripts and this script should be in page object structure this is about selenium id now selenium rc this one is also important web driver and selenium grid in selenium rc we can say that selenium remote control is a server and written in java that accepts commands for the browser via hypertext transfer protocol http and rc makes it possible to write automated tests for a web application in any programming language point to benefit rc makes it possible to write automated tests for a web application in any programming language which allows for better integration of selenium in existing unit test frameworks and selenium rc provides an api that means application programming interface and library for each of its supporting languages like html java c sharp perl php python and ruby the this ability to use selenium rc with a high level programming language to develop test cases also allows the automated testing to be integrated with a project's automated build environment it allows you to write automated web application and ui test in any programming language against any http website using any mainstream java script enabled prop the primary task of using selenium rc is to convert your selenses into a programming language and it also provides solution to cross browser testing now next web driver selenium driver is designed to address the limitation of selenium rc and it is also called selenium 2 and it is a successor of selenium rc it is also designed to support dynamic web pages and control the browsers by programming and makes direct calls to the browser using its browser's native support for automation and web driver's goal is to supply a well designed objected object oriented api that provides improved support for modern advanced web app testing problems and web drivers interacts directly with the browsers without any intermediate intermediary unlike selenium rc that depends on a server and it is used in the following context first multi browser testing including improved functionality for browser which is not well supported by the selenium rc that means selenium 1.0 then handling multiple frames that mean multiple browser windows pop ups and alerts and complex page navigation 
the advantage of selenium if we are talking about advantages or disadvantages of selenium web driver mostly advantage we can say that scripts written to perform browser action to simulate web user second test against various browsers and devices third flexible to handle frequent code changes fourth watch scripts run against the browser fifth scalable and selenium grid and the main disadvantages or we can say drawbacks of selenium web driver is simulates user actions but does not support scrolling and second must hack shortcomings with javascripts and web driver tends to be out of date with frequent browser updates now selenium grid selenium grid is a tool used together with selenium rc to run test on different machines against different browsers in parallel that is running multiple tests at the same time against different machine running different browsers and operating system now the question arise here why and when to use selenium grid when to run our test against multiple browser the multiple versions of browsers and the browsers running on different operating systems and it is also used to reduce the time taken by the test suit to complete a test pass by running test in a parallel why is selenium used selenium is basically used to automate the testing across various web browsers and it supports various browsers like chrome mozilla firefox safari internet explorer and you can very easily automate browse testing across these browsers using selenium web driver so simply we can say that taking the other automation tools into consideration selenium has the capability to operate on almost every operating system and selenium selenium is an open source testing tool and hence it serves for cost effective automation testing and selenium supports multiple languages such as python perl ruby php dot net c sharp and java and also required to be comfortable in just a single language in order to operate selenium at the time of interview the interview will ask that why selenium is used one highly beneficial feature of selenium is that the language used for building the program in indip is independent of the language that the web application or website is using and this implies that the test scripts can be developed in any one of the languages that selenium supports and selenium has a very dynamic developer community that is backed up by google so far selenium is concerned we have a number of robust methods for location of elements such as ccs xpath dom and so on and with selenium it is convenient to implement framework that revolve around object oriented programming like keyword driven and data driven and hybrid and with the use of selenium it is possible to execute simultaneous test leveraging various browsers on various machines and this is turn cost cuts down the time for test execution when a large project in progress and selenium provides support for integration of open source frameworks like test ng j unit n unit and so on so that that's why we can use selenium now platforms and browsers supported by the selenium as specified in the selenium official source guide 
Here is the list of platforms and browsers supported by the Selenium. First at Google Chrome, IE7, 8, 9, 10 and 11 on appropriate combination of Vista, Windows 7, Windows 8 and Windows 8.1. And IE6 is no longer supported. The driver supports running 32-bit and 64-bit version of the browser where is it applicable. Then Firefox, Safari, Opera, HTML Unit, Phantom JS, Android with Cylindroid or FPM, I operating system with iOS driver or FPM. So this is the platforms and browsers supported by the Selenium. Now, the main features of Selenium. Selenium is an open source and portable web testing framework. And Selenium ID provides a playback and record feature for authoring tests without the need to learn a test scripting language. And it can be considered as the leading cloud-based testing platform which help testers to record their actions and export them as a reusable scripts with a simple to understand and easy to use interface. Selenium supports various operating systems, browsers and programming languages. But in case of programming languages, we can say that C Sharp, Java, Python, PHP, Ruby, Perl and JavaScript. In operating system, we can say that Android, iOS, Windows, Linux, Mac and Solaris. About browsers that Google Chrome, Mozilla Firefox, I, H, Opera, Safari, etc. And it also supports parallel test execution which reduces time and increases the efficiency of test. Selenium can be integrated with frameworks like Ant and Maven for source code compilation. This is the main features of Selenium. Now, the advantages of Selenium. First is combination of tool and DSL. Selenium is an absolute combination of tools and DSL in order to carry out various types of test. It allows you to record the test carried out through the browser. It supports multiple web browsers like i, Safari, Firefox and Chrome. Uses a rich language for test. Third, a flexible language. That means when the test cases are prepared, they can be executed on any app operating system. Reduces test execution time. That means Selenium supports parallel test execution that reduces the time taken in executing parallel test. And last one is this laser resource required. The Selenium requires laser resource when compared to its competitors like UFT, RFT and etc. The main drawbacks of Selenium before that I want to cover other things also that advantages that it is free no license cost as it is open source and it supports various programming languages for enhancing the test case. In short, we can say it Selenium uses less hardware resources and it supports parallel test case execution. Now the drawbacks of Selenium. Incomplete solution. Selenium requires third party framework in order to completely automate the testing of web application. That means it supports web application only doesn't support desktop application. And we can say that no centralized maintenance of objects and elements and new features may not work properly. Second, requires high skills. Though it supports multiple programming languages, it requires a high level proficiency to deal with it effectively. Hard to modify codes. The scripts written in silences is not user friendly. 
which makes it hard to modify the course no reliable support for anybody as it is open source tool difficult to use take more time to create test case and difficult to set up test in environment when it compares to vendor tools like uft rft and seek test fourth one tougher to support other browsers selenium face faces difficulties when tried to implement in any browser other than firefox thank you self satish shankar rao banai working as an assistant professor in department of computer engineering kk wag institute of engineering education and research nashik in this session we are going to cover unit number 6 software quality tools and the subject name is software testing and quality assurance the main topics to be covered in this session first total quality management second eight elements of total quality management key elements of tqm system other elements of tqm tqm framework and the importance of total quality management so let's start with what is total quality management the term total quality management was originally coined by the naval air system command to describe it's a japanese style management approach to quality improvement in the year of 1985 and it is also called as total quality control it shows the way of managing organizations to achieve excellence total means everything and quality means degree of excellence and management means art act way of organizing controlling planning directing to achieve certain goal so we can say that total quality management is a structured approach to over overall organizational management and the main focus of the process is to improve the quality of an organization's output including goods and services and through continual improvement of internal practices the standards set as part of the tqm approach can reflect both internal priorities and any industry standards currently in place so tqm approach involves the continual improvement of organizational process and the main goal is is to customer satisfaction and through tqm continuous efforts are directed by the management as well as employees of a particular particular organization to ensure long term customer loyalty and customer satisfaction and industry in this standards can be defined at multiple levels and may include adherence to various laws and regulations governing the operation of the particular business and industry standards can also include the production of items to an understood norm even if the norm is not backed by official regulation and tqm ensures that the long term success 
since it makes every single employee to work towards the improvement of work culture processes services and the system so main motto of tklm we can say that improve the quality then increase productivity that means less rejects faster job then lower cost and higher profits then business growth competitive jobs and the investment so we can say this is the main effects of total quality management so if we are talking about the main elements or otherwise key elements of total quality man management those are first ethics second integrity third trust then training team work leadership recognition and the communication if we are talking about the key elements first point we can say the customer focus the main objective is to attain total customer satisfaction customer focus includes task like studying customers needs gathering customers requirements measuring customer satisfaction and managing the customer satisfaction if we talk about process the main objective is to achieve continuous process improvement by reducing process variation and it includes both business process and product development process and product quality can be enhanced through process improvement if you are talking about human side of quality the main objective is to create a company wide quality culture and it focuses on areas like leadership management commitment total participation employee empowerment and other social psychological and human factors if you are talking about measurement and analysis the main objective is to derive uh, to drive continuous improvement in all quality factors by the goal oriented measurement system this is all about the key elements of quality management if we talking about other elements of total quality management the first one is recognition second training third team work fourth leadership integrity and ethics and communication so let's start with recognition recognition means it derives employees to work hard and deliver their best the tkm boost up to the employees to work up to that level and give their best second training leaders and managers who lead the team should make their team members aware of the benefits and procedures of total quality management and the team must also be trained on interpersonal skills technical skills problem solving skills decision making skills and likewise third team work Teamwork is one of the most crucial and unavoidable elements of total quality management. When united, employees can combine various ideas to come up with a great brainstorming procedure that can lead to amazing 
improvisation and results and at last communication it is obvious that no team can be success without effective communication it is communication that binds employees together and bring out the best from them because lack of communication of information could lead to misunderstanding and in turn the problems so this is all out of other elements of total quality management that means recognition training team work leadership integrity and ethics and last one is communication now let's discuss about total quality management frameworks so the main frameworks are like that first plan do check act second the quality improvement third the sei capability maturity model and last framework is lean enterprise management so first discuss about plan do check act it is also known as the deming cycle or pds ca cycle that means plan do check act and it is a four step management method which works in an iterative fashion it works on the basis of feedback cycle that is used for optimizing a single process or entire production line and is uses feedback loops and statistically quality control techniques to experiment with methods for improvement and to build predictive models of the product second framework is the quality improvement paradigm experience factory operation the main purpose is to build a continuously improving organization and this is based on evolving goals and assessment of those goals so an internal assessment is done against the organization own goals and status means rather than process areas and by making use of techniques such as qualitative analysis quantitative analysis goal question matrix that is gqm and model building etc products are improved through the processes now sei cmm that means capability maturity model it is a stage process improvement and based on assessment of key process areas represents a continuous process improvement and it is a five level process maturity models is defined based on repeated assessment of an organization's capability in the key process areas there are five levels in cmm that means capability capability maturity model the first level is initial second one is repeatable third one is defined fourth one is managed and fifth one is optimizing don't be confused optimizing not optimized because it is a continuous process and some research work work is always be going on in the organization that is optimizing and to improvement is achieved by action plans for poor process areas then lean enterprise management it is based on the principles of concentration of production on value added 
activities and the elimination or reduction of not value added activities and the main goal is to build software with the minimum necessary set of activities and then no tailor the processes to the products requirements and the main approach uses such concepts as, as technology management human centered management decentralized organization quality management supplier and customer integration and internationalization so all these the total quality management framework now the benefits of total quality management we can say that first the ensure superior quality products and services continual improvement pdsc that means plan to study at cycle and this is essential for customer satisfaction which eventually leads to customer loyalty and these tools help an organization to design and create a product which the customer actually wants and desires and ensures increased revenues and higher productivity for the organization which helps organization to reduce waste and inventory that's why the benefits of total quality management is very important other total quality management benefits and advantages first strengthen competitive position adaptability to changing or emerging market conditions and to environmental and other government regulations higher productivity enhance market image elimination of defects and waste to reduce cost and better cost management higher profitability to improve customer focus and satisfaction to improve so sorry to increase customer loyalty and retention to increase job security improve employee morale enhance shareholder and stakeholder values and last improve and innovative processes so now discuss about very important point that is ishikawa's seven basic tools so ishikawa's seven basic tool is consist of a set of general tools useful for planning or controlling project quality and it was introduced by Koro Ishikawa a Japanese professor of faculty of engineering and the seven basic tools are first checklist pareto diagrams histogram run charts scatter diagram control chart and cause effect diagram so let's start with one by one the first one is checklist the main purpose of checklist is for collecting and organizing measured or counted data and data collected can be used as an input data for other quality tools and a check sheet is a structured sheet prepared form for collecting and analyzing the data and it is a generic uh, generic tool that can be adapted for a wide variety of purposes the check sheet prepared based on the location where the data is created to collect check sheet data 
on the frequency, location, or even cause of problems or defect that occur. The check sheet is divided into a number of different regions and data is then marked into the different regions using to mark check to indicate something. The main benefits of checklist we can say that collect data in systematic and organized manner and to determine source of problems to facilitate classification of data. Another type of checklist is common error list which is part of the stress kickoffs of the DPP that means defect prevention process and this DPP involves three key steps. First step is analysis of defect to trace the root cause. Second, action teams to implement and suggested the actions. And third stage is kickoff meetings as the measure feedback mechanism. So this is all about checklist. Now Pareto diagram. Now the question I hear that how is it done? First, create a preliminary list of problem classification then tally the occurrence in each problem classification then arrange each classification in order from highest to lowest and at last construct the bar chart the main benefits of Pareto diagram that Pareto analyst helps graphically displays result so that significant few problems emerge from the general background and it tells you what to work on first. Third one is histogram. Actually this uh, histogram was first introduced by Carl Pearson and histogram is a graph that shows how often a value or range of value occurs within a given time period and it provides a visual summary of large amounts of variable data and it is the easiest way to evaluate the distribution of data and to determine the spread or variation of a set of data points in a graphical form. This is the main pattern of the histogram we can say that uh, first one is symmetric, second one is skewed left, then skewed right, unimodal, bimodal and multimodal. And the main, main benefits of histogram that allows you to understand at a glance the variation that exists in a process. And the shape of the histogram will show process behavior and often it will tell you to dig deeper for otherwise unseen cause of variation. And the shape and size of the dispersion will help identify otherwise hidden sources of variation and used to determine the capacity of a process. The next tool is run chart. Run chart satisfaction is a technique that separates data gathered from a variety of sources so that patterns can be seen and some lists replace stratification with flowchart or, or run chart. And stratification is a technique used in combination with other data analysis tools. When data from a variety of sources or categories have been lumped together. The meaning of the data can be impossible to see and this technique separates the data so the patterns can be seen very easily. Another important point that run chart also known as, as a run sequence plot and run chart helps you to analyze the following. First, 
trends in the process that is whether the process is moving upward or downward trends in the output of the manufacturing process and if the process has any cycle or any shift and the process has any non random pattern in behavior over a period of time then scatter diagram a scatter diagram displays the relation of relationship of two interval variables and scatter diagrams are also called scatter graphs scatter charts scatter plots and even scatter grams to identify the correlations that might exist between a quality characteristics and a factor that may be driving it and its scatter diagram shows the correlation between two variables in a process and these variables could be a critical to quality that means ctq characteristics and a factor affecting it two factors affecting the ctq or two related quality characteristics and dot represent data points are scattered on the diagram the main benefits of scatter diagram it helps identify and test probable causes by knowing which elements of your process are related and how they are related and you will know what to control on why or what to weigh to affect the quality characteristics next basic tool is control chart in control chart you can use a process control chart to track the values of a process over time and it consists of a central line which represents the average or mean and two parallel lines that represent the upper and lower control limits values of the parameters of interest plotted on the chart which represent the state of process the main benefits that predict process out of control and out of specification limits distinguish between specific identifiable cause of variation and can be used for statistical process control and last tool is cause effect diagram ishikawa's diagram are named after their inventor and it looks like a child's drawing of a fish skeleton which is used to show the cause of some effect and they are also called fish bone charts and their function is to identify the factors that are causing an undesired effect for improvement action or to identify the factors needed to bring about a desired result and the factors are identified the people familiar with the process involves the main benefits of the cause effect diagram that tracks problems drawn into bite size prices to find root cause foster steam work common understanding of factors causing the problem road map to verify picture of the process and follows the brainstorming relationship so this is all about ishikawa seven basic tools so i am going to stop here thank you for your patience